and one of two in the entire world. And he said, well, if you're not going to cure disease, what are you going to do? Well, what we're going to do is try and bring about the correction of these obtrusions. Now, let's talk about the word obtrusion, because <coughs> spinologists in most of the world use the word obtrusion. I understand you, you are generally using the word occlusion, which has a slightly <coughs> different meaning, but more or less the same. And chiropractors call it a subluxation. What is, exactly is it? It's something that interferes with your nerve system. It breaks the communication, the clear communication between the brain and the rest of the body. That's what an obtrusion or a subluxation does. It causes an impure communication. It's like having a radio and you have it slightly out of tune. So instead of getting a clear message, it gets a lot of static. And the body then doesn't hear the clear message and can't respond to it. Whether you call it a subluxation, or an occlusion, or an obtrusion, doesn't matter a damn. Who has it doesn't matter a damn. It's a fact. That is what it does. And spinology education is to teach you, you the students, how to recognize this interference. And more important, how to get rid of it. To reestablish communication between the brain and all parts of the body. That's the only job of a spinologist, to re-establish communication. So the body works in harmony with itself. It works as one instead of 10,000 disunited parts. All the parts are again united. And when the parts are united, true, you don't get sick as often. Your immune system works better, but that's minor. The fact is, when all the parts are working together, you become a better person. You become more whole within yourself. You become better at playing the piano. You become better at doing crossword puzzles. Whatever you do, whatever you like to do, you can do it better if your whole body is working together instead of parts of it working against itself. So that was the concept which caused the birth of spinology. And from that idea, now there was a time when I was the world's only practicing spinologist. I didn't call myself a spinologist, I called myself a straight chiropractor. But what it was doing was essentially allowing the body to express itself without interference. And then I shared that with other people. And some of them changed, most of them didn't change, they were scared to. They needed to, to get sick people well. And not everybody who is sick is sick because of interference with the nerve system. There are other reasons for being sick. <laughs> so, a person comes in to visit the spinologist. If the spinologist were to just address himself or herself to the treatment of disease, we'd miss our, our real function, we'd miss our purpose. And furthermore, addressing the disease doesn't always work because the obtrusion is not the only cause of disease. Some people get sick because of malnutrition. Some people get sick because of inherited factors. Lots and lots of people who are sick will go to a spinologist or a chiropractor and after the treatment they're still sick. I wonder how the spinologist feels, or how a chiropractor feels, if his wonderful thing of adjustment, bringing about the correction of the nervous system, doesn't work. Supposing the person with a problem is a really close member of your own family, and you say, this will cure your headaches, and you adjust them, and lo and behold, the headaches don't disappear. Why? Well, because they happen to be caused by brain tumor, or they happen to be caused by high blood pressure, or some other factor. <coughs> How does the spinologist feel when his own parent doesn't respond to spinology? So the spinologist says, well, I did it right. It must be spinology that's wrong. What we need is to add something else. Several years ago, I wrote an article for chiropractors called The Third Paradigm. 
Now, the first paradigm of chiropractic is all you have to do is adjust the spine, get rid of the interference, and nature will cure all things. Except nature doesn't cure all things. They have slogans like the power that made the body heal. It's a wonderful slogan. The power that made the body heals the body. Yeah, only sometimes. Sometimes even the power that made the body can't heal it. There are people born with deficiencies. Let's say that they only have one kidney or one arm. They'll never be whole again. All that spinology can do is allow the body to use all of the parts that are there. It can't put in parts that weren't there. Yes, I know we have miracle situations in which after 35 years of functioning on one kidney, somebody would develop another one. But that, those miracles don't happen every day. I tell you a secret, even backaches don't go away all the time. Ask the chiropractors, they'll tell you. Some backaches don't respond to chiropractic care. So what do you do? If your job is to get rid of the backache, somebody comes in, pays you good money, and you do your job, and lo and behold, the backache doesn't go away. Well, might you try something else? That's what causes chiropractors to mix other professions in with chiropractic. They say, well, let's add some exercise. Maybe that'll get rid of the backache. If that doesn't do it, let's change their diet. Maybe that'll get rid of the headaches. And if that doesn't do it, let's try something, let's try acupuncture. There's nothing wrong with acupuncture, but it's not chiropractic. And certainly it's not spinology. Spinology consists of examining the spine to find any deviations which interfere with the nerve system. And if they're found, to bring about the correction. Only because the nerve interference is damaging to life itself. It doesn't deal with any symptom. When you have a subluxation or an obtrusion or an occlusion, that's what you call it. If you have one of those things, your nerve system is interfered with and you can never be a whole person again as long as that situation is unchanged. That's what spinology is all about. That's what straight chiropractic is all about. It does not include the correcting of nutrition. The correcting of nutrition is important. But that's not a spinologist's job. A spinologist's job is to make sure that your body properly uses all the food that it gets. If you're too stupid to select good food, <coughs> that's not spinologist's fault. Spinologist's job is to put you in such physical condition, recommunicating the brain, with the rest of the body through the nerve system that it can do the best it can. I can't make you into an Einstein or into a Stravinsky. I can just make you the best that you can be. That's the purpose of spinology. Now, before I go into something else, are there any questions I want to discuss so far? And please, I'm only here for today. Tomorrow I'm going to go back to the United States. So make sure you don't leave here with any questions unanswered. That goes for chiropractors in the audience, students, prospective students, and the public in general. Anything you want to know, if it's within my realm, I will answer it for you. If you don't ask, I don't know what you, what you need to know. There's no point in my standing here all day talking about what I want to talk about. I need to respond to your need for knowledge. Tell me what the needs are. Any questions at this point? Okay, let's move on. New, new screen. Ta da! <laughs> Alright, anybody who's wearing a jacket has on a dirty 